I'm Carl Anthony with AutoSense TV, and we're here at AutoSense Brussels, back at the Auto World Museum, speaking today with Biert Decoy, who is the founder and CEO of Espros Biert. So good to see you again here in Brussels. Hi, Carl. Nice meeting you. So tell us a little bit about Espros. Just give us an overview of the company. Well, uh, we are busy, as usual, very busy. Uh, we just uh, taped out two more new uh, imager chips, uh, time of flight imager chips, gated imaging. Uh, it is a, a big event uh, for us. And uh, at the same time, in parallel, we uh, uh, developed camera modules based on our standard uh, uh, TOF camera chips, uh, EPC 660, 635. Uh, which we show for the first time here at the AutoSense here in Brussels. So let's talk about what you have on display. You have actually two cameras here with two different fields of view. So give us an overview of that. Tell us about what you have here. Yeah, typically uh, 3D tough uh, imagers uh, or cameras have a short range of view. Basically maybe 2 meters, 3 meters, 5 meters, maybe 10 meters but typically not uh, 50 meters and not under full sunlight. And what we show here uh, for the first time is a camera with a 50 meter operating range, uh, which is uh, uh, working under full sunlight. There is a lot of sunlight in the building, even now as we're talking, more sun has filtered in through the big windows at Auto World. But yeah. it's my understanding that even in the sunlight here in the building, we can still see Estella waving to us down, down the way. Absolutely. Uh, uh, we can uh, demonstrate that here. And it's fantastic. We have uh, this uh, big window uh, in this uh, museum here. Uh, and it's a sunny day, so we get a lot of sunlight uh, to the, the targets and uh, we can demonstrate that uh, our cameras are unaffected uh, on the, uh, from the sunlight. So that's the longer one at 50 meters. You have another camera here that has a different field of view. Tell us about that one. Uh, basically it's the same uh, uh, camera module, so the same uh, imager, the same uh, FPGA controller, uh, the same kind of uh, illumination. The difference is that the field of view uh, is uh, uh, made by a, a, a wide angle lens on the receiver side. It's 110 by about 90 degrees uh, field of view uh, and of course also the illumination is uh, adapted uh, to that uh, field of view. So uh, Beart, for those who may not be familiar, what is time of flight and then why is time of flight important? Okay, time of flight is uh, simply measuring distances to objects uh, based on the speed of flight. So we, the, the most simple principle, but hard to uh, implement by the way, uh, is firing a short laser pulse and measuring the elapsed time from uh, the laser to the object and back to the, uh, to the camera. Uh, this is uh, it's called a direct time of flight or PTOF. Uh, there is another um, uh, uh, option to measure time, uh, the distance with the time of flight. Uh, you emit uh, modulated light and measure then the phase shift uh, it gets from the camera to the object and back to the, uh, to the camera. Uh, these two cameras, they are based on this uh, indirect time of flight. And uh, typically, uh, these indirect time of flight cameras have a higher resolution uh, than the pulse time of flight scanner lidar principles uh, have much higher resolution, not uh, not a little bit more, and uh, produce um, much more uh, pixel points per second. Typically, these cameras here up to 10 million points per second, where where uh, a lidar system is in the range between 100,000 and maybe 1 million, so at least 10 times more uh, resolution. And that allows uh, better uh, uh, identification and classification of objects. So Beer, tell us a little bit about your customers. Tell us who they are and tell us how you're providing solutions for them. Well, uh, AutoSense, uh, of course, uh, tells a little bit about that. Uh, our, some of our customers are uh, tier ones in the automotive industry, uh, using our uh, solutions for uh, uh, 
detecting objects around the car, so uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, around cars, but also inside the car for uh, uh, detecting of left behind objects, uh, uh, for example, or monitoring a driver or uh, do uh, the passengers uh, 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 wear the seatbelt, uh, kind of this. And going forward now, what do you see happening in the market? Are there any trends that you're noticing? And if you are, how are you as SPROS, how are you in a position to address those trends and to meet those challenges head on? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, I think there are trends, yes. Uh, uh, more and more sensors uh, are equipped to the car, as you can see, everyone uh, can see basically and uh, one portion and this is uh, new I would say is that they really become 3D time of flight sensors not just uh, cameras or radar systems which uh, suffer uh, on uh, uh, very low resolution hard to, to uh, identify or uh, classify objects uh, and uh, what I also see is that, that more and more um, controllers, ECUs, are designed in a way that they can really do sensor fusion of different kind of sensors, like radar, like uh, RGB cameras, and like tough cameras. So, Beer, before we finish up, do you have any final thoughts to add? It's a, <laughs> it's a hard, a very hard question. Uh, it's a great opportunity uh, being here at AutoSense. It's really a, a, a good plot platform for us, meeting people uh, in the industry, talking about uh, new technology, showing uh, our capabilities. Uh, uh, it's a really great, great uh, uh, spot for uh, networking. So uh, that's. Uh, what I appreciate, uh, not just in uh, here in Brussels, but also in Detroit, it, it was great. And uh, uh, I know that uh, you are going to establish something in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, hopefully, that works out. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great idea to do that uh, in in Asia because uh, there's a big trend we see uh, in uh, uh, and, and and very high speed of implementation of these technologies in Asia and. Uh, uh, providing such a platform in Asia is, uh, is a, a good thing for us. Beert, we're glad that you've joined us in Brussels. It was, it was a great opportunity to interview you in Detroit in May, now to interview you again in Brussels. We'll look forward to seeing you in Detroit and then uh, again in Hong yeah. Kong. So thank you for your time. Uh, uh, pleasure. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Speaking today with Beert Decoy, who is the founder and CEO of Espros. For more AutoSense Brussels and for more AutoSense TV, like, subscribe, and share.